hard it gets for me. So, and that is a, a goal for me. You know, it, it changed me a lot. I, I may lost five children, but my mom used to always say, y'all gonna bury me. I'm not burying none of y'all. And she, unfortunately, she passed the way she said she wanted to pass. All my brothers and sisters are still here, but my five remaining kids have lost five of their brothers and sisters. And as a brother and sister, I couldn't imagine going through losing that many of my siblings. So it changed me a lot. It changed me to want to change the world if I can use my story to make somebody just take a second and think and can look at me and say, this woman has been through all this and she still managed to smile. Yes. Because my faith is oriented like that. It's, it's, it's like that. Okay? So, yeah. So it changed me a lot. It, it did. Thank you. I <laughs> changed me because So when my mama passed, I'm my only child. Watch my grandma struggle every day. My mama was the only child of losing her only child. So me losing my mama at an early age, all I knew how to do was be a parent to man. And I always, always, even about they life insurance policy. They crack jokes. You know, I'm going to kill you to get your money. You know, my kids crack jokes like that and stuff, whatever. But, but I know it's my mom. I got my kids prepared to bury me. I never, not once, could imagine me having to bury one of my kids. Because in my generation, growing up, that's just what I'm to see my kids go through that hurt, I lost them. I lost my oldest son, because he didn't know how to deal. Mm. Take your time, take your time. I just knew I was doing the right thing. I just knew we could be able to get through it as a family. I didn't have the resources. Get out there and get some help for grief to deal with the loss of a sibling. I never experienced that. I experienced what it sounds like to lose a mama. I didn't have necessary tools to get out there and get counseling for my kids. Because I just knew we are pretty ass family. We can get through this. That's the new I had it all together. But my son, my oldest son, he said he had to be shackled up to see his baby brother the last time. He could have hugged his brother. My son didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to his brother. So, he retaliated the only way he know how. The street. My kids were raised up in those streets. They came from a loving home with a single working mama, but I always made it happy for them no matter what. Let them know no matter what struggle we go through. We got each other. Y'all don't got to do it by yourself. I'm going to be 
changed me tremendously. Um, Snoop was my only child, so growing up with him, being used to him for 18 years, and just after you know dropping a dime, he's gone. I became a murderer myself mentally after losing him. I would you know plot on how I could retaliate because as his mom and his comforter, his protector, how do I sit and not do nothing and allow a justice system who I already have seen fail? Um, I died myself when I lost him. My memory is not as good as it used to be. I can, you know, I just cannot remember certain things. The rage that it brings, it, it's a different rage. Um, anything can just irritate you. And I find myself around the anniversary days and holidays that my attitude is different. And I have to check myself and realize that, hey, I'm not being a good person to people. Um, it just changes everything about you. Um, I, I didn't sleep. I don't even think I realized Snoop was dead till about three years later. Mm -hmm. Even after going to a funeral and all these things, I don't think it tapped in mentally till about that third year that, hey, wait, what's going on in my life? My son is dead and he's not coming back. I think that has to be one of the hardest things to come for me, you know, is that there's no return. And going to court for five years just to get no justice, that brought a different type of rage. Because here I am dead and steady trying to keep a legacy alive because I, I watched his work ethic, so I'm like, I cannot allow his name to die. So during the journey, I'm steady just moving and making moves, but I'm still dead. On the brighter side of it, I received my purpose in life. God revealed to me why he created Denisha, and I think that has to be the most beautiful thing that I can even acknowledge. And if it were not for my son's death, I would have never tapped into my purpose. Because I thought that we were okay. I thought that our life was fine. I work, we're fine, it's okay. Even with you know getting a record deal, that was his dream. So yes, I support it, but if this doesn't work, mama got us. And so to receive my purpose in that manner, of course I didn't like it at all. But I understand. And, and the spiritual side of it, because I know how good God is, I had to check myself and say, I cannot glorify God God, just because things are good for me. Like I have to trust his process. And I think as humans, trusting God's process is like the, the worst task. It's like you really don't. We say we trust God, but you really don't trust God when things start happening bad in your life. You want to go to God and pray when things are just good and glory. But when you really trust God, you have to understand, like, what was this about? And I say this a lot. And my son being a part of the industry, I said, yeah, he got killed by a gun, but he dodged the, the biggest bullet, which was the industry. So I'm thankful that even though he got a chance to taste his dreams, that he didn't get caught up in the corrupt part of it, in the evilness of it. And so because of that, I just... When I get weak, I think about why I'm moving. Why did this happen to me? You know, this new life of mine, what is my obligation? So when I see other mothers, and I'm hopefully they can just see me and say, oh, well, she's making it. Even if I say nothing and don't open my mouth, if they can just see that I woke up and washed my face, got out the bed, those were tasks that may be simple to everyone else, but you really, it's a task to even have the mental to say, when I open my eyes, the first thing I think, Snoop is dead every single day that's the first thing there's no i'm tired still my head hurts it's like snoop is dead now now that you know this and you have comprehended that your son is dead what's your next move for today and that's an everyday reality for me so murder has changed me and i will never be the same woman i started off as before this happened thank you can you pass it to Probably the first time I've ever even talked to anybody else because I don't talk to anybody about it. I'm in my own mind, I'm dealing with it my own self. And like I said, God and I, we're going to work it out. The day I got the call, Lil Melvin, and again, y'all, it's all three to everybody. He Lil Melvin to me forever. The way when I got the call, I was just going to call him 
to tell him, okay, I'm ready to go get my hair done because I knew he was coming back to town. And of all days, of all days, I go into a gas station and leave my phone in that store. It was all of 15 minutes. I run back to the, I go back to the store and get my phone. And I have all these missed calls. And then I call my son back. He's the only one I call back. And he's like, Mom, you got to get that brother got shot. So I didn't even know where to go. And he, I'm like, where are you at? What street? I just Googled Oakland, this hospital. And this is what it took me to. And I was like on two wheels trying to get there. All the way there, I prayed. I'm like, he going to be OK. He going to be OK. He going to be OK. But then when I get there, it was like an hour, two hours. They're not telling me anything. They finally come tell me after that long, you know, he didn't make it. I lost it. That day, that was the end of my world that I thought this is my firstborn. We went through so much from him getting in trouble in his early years in school to him. The, the song letter to my mom was really a letter. He wrote a letter telling me how he's going to change, how he's going to do this, how I'm not going to do this no more. And to overcome all of that from being homeless, because not only was he homeless, we were homeless. And to overcome all of that only to get killed. I'm still, I, I don't question God, I don't ask him why. I sing at too many funerals to know, Cody, it can happen to you. I wasn't ready. I'm still not ready. I listen to him every day. I watch him every single day. My sister tells me, you need cancer, why? I think I have to be able to still be able to look at him every day. But I know I got to go on. And I know that, you know, I had a whole lot of them. They want to do this, they want to do that. What is that going to do? Nothing y'all do is going to bring the belly back. Nothing. I just wish these, these young men and y'all just, you know, focus on y'all kids because that's who I see hurt the most is the mothers and the kids. We suffered the most. I don't have nothing to do with nothing that was going on, but I'm hurting the most. My kids, them grandkids, they had nothing to do with nothing, whatever. But I see the hurt. I just know I gotta keep going. I'm gonna keep on saying, "Little Melvin, you know, little Melvin." I miss my baby. I really do. I'm not a talker. Anybody know me? I don't talk. I'm not. <laughs> And I was so nervous even to come, but 